you know, after the events of Brotherhood, Ezio sort of looks back upon his life, right? So now he's sort of older, wiser, looks on his life and wonders, you know, has he been living somebody else's life, right? Has, you know, where is this all leading to? And so he goes on this, embarks on this pilgrimage, goes to Masyaf, the legendary home of the assassins, uh, in hopes of finding uh, the secret library left behind by Altair. Gets to Masyaf, finds it literally filled with Templars. And, uh, you know, what sort of starts off as a pilgrimage turns into Ways Against Time, as he discovers that there's much, something much more important hidden beneath Masyaf. And uh, the way is locked, it's barred by this huge door which needs five keys to sort of uh, open it. And he discovers that the keys are actually in Constantinople, so he races to Constantinople and tries to find the keys before the Templars can actually get their hands on it and open it first. This is the first time that Ezio is actually uh, embarking on a quest, uh, and you know, he's the instigator of it, right? It's not re he's being proactive, not reactive. And you do see that sort of uh, the difference in his approach and the way he deals with everything in the game. Ezio arrives in Constantinople, finds it sort of uh, in the middle of a sort of a political, uh, uh, you know, almost a civil internal war, right? Uh, the Sultan is getting older, his two sons are sort of vying for power and there's this, you know, huge unstable situation going on there. So Ezio has to sort of navigate through this complex political sort of like turmoil to get the keys, needs to find out sort of like who his allies are, who his enemies are, and uh, you know, ultimately try, he has to try to find who the uh, Templar is that's sort of hidden and pulling the strings, the one that's behind all of this sort of turmoil. And uh, of course he'll meet a lot of allies, a lot of enemies, and um, also a love interest. Salve. The reason why we're actually, uh, we actually decided to use the, uh, the uh, Altair characters, you know, as I mentioned, Ezio is sort of on this inner quest, right? And um, he's the one that's actually playing as Altair, it's not Desmond. And the reason that this is possible is because the keys that they're actually finding, that Ezio is actually finding in Constantinople, are first civilization artifacts. And these artifacts are actually uh, sort of the predecessors to the Animus, right? They, let, they record sort of key moments in somebody's life in this case Altair. So every time Ezio is sort of like uh, going through one of these key moments and sort of like uh, gaining perspective on Altair's life, it's also like reflecting back on his own life and you know ultimately it's through Altair's life that Ezio will you know make the ultimate decisions that he has to make in the game. Revelations is all about um, closing a lot of the doors that have been opened in you know previous installments. Uh, after Revelations uh, a lot, the players should feel a sense of satisfaction in, in that a lot of the questions, the main questions that they had, like why all of this, why, you know, three games for Ezio, why everything is leading to this point, all of that stuff will be sort of clarified. It'll set up the fans for exactly what is to come. Like after this game, the, the fans will clearly know what's to come.